So, hello everyone, uh, everybody, uh, hello everyone, uh, everyone um, who are who is joining this uh, presentation. I would uh, I would like to thank uh, everybody by Kavoker. Thank you, Darius, Monica, who are uh, who give me the chance to to have this uh, webinar. Uh, the focal point of this webinar will be will be the preendo, but not only from the from the wider sense, from the from the from the sense like preendo build up, but a little bit from the wider sense. What uh, shall we shall we think about uh, before we start the the endo? So let me introduce uh, me a little bit. So my name is uh, Roman Blauta. I'm a dentist from uh, Slovakia. So I uh, say hello from the capital city, uh, which is Bratislava. And as you see, the, the, the city is so empty, like uh, every uh, everyone city now uh, in the world. So. Um, I grew up here and spent my child childhood here. And um, if we go on the other side of the Danube River, we see a big settlement uh, which was built in the 70s and 80s. And here we have uh, our private practice. And I work there with my wife, and we are doing all all. All stuff of the dentistry, but my focal point is uh, the endo and uh, and also uh, restorative procedures under the dental operating uh, microscope. So the question in the start, if we, we start uh, endo, we always uh, ask ourselves: uh, it is the start or the finish? So this question is very important because uh, we must consider all the things uh, that can happen during the treatment and we must ask ourselves uh, does it really make sense it is worth to do the endo and start the endo so the pre endo in the wider sense uh, we can uh, we can uh, look at it like it's the it's the inspection of the hard dental tissue. So we want to see if there are any fractures. We want to see if it's uh, enough uh, dental structures, like in the frontal teeth, where we check the ferula effect. And also uh, today we are we will be speaking about the biological, with, uh, which is very important. The other thing is the periapical area, uh, area where we can, uh, which we can uh, check with uh, with uh, uh, with uh, our intraoral uh, uh, units and also the CBCT. So it's the imaging, and um, we come to the decision what uh, what will be, for example, the treatment time. So if the tra treatment time, for example, is uh, too long and there are many complications and the result is, if, for example, 50-50, then we, 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 we must say to each other, OK, it is really worth, OK, maybe uh, implant would be better. So there's the end over the versus uh, implant thing. And also, as we need a lot of lot of time, the price is going up, so we must decide if it's worth it. So uh, first, uh, let me start with the inspection of the hard dental tissues. Uh, I will I will have many many uh, many intraoral uh, X-rays here, so we will discuss things from uh, from uh, the clinical point of view. So it will be not uh, not much uh, theory, but it will be many clinical cases. So uh, let's look um, uh, on this X-ray. It was uh, um, sent it to me by a doctor. And the question was, uh, does it make sense uh, to continue or start with the, with the um, endo? Um, but uh, in this case, it would be the re-endo. But we see that in the periapical area, there is no, um, no lesion, but we see a bis, uh, pass discharge from the, uh, uh, the, the place between the roots. So it can be a periodontal problem or it can be a BL falsa. 
So somebody, for example, could make a, 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 a cut with a burr uh, through, through, through the hard uh, dental tissue, uh, tissue. So this is the question. So we cannot uh, tell uh, only by x-ray, but we must look inside. So this is the picture what we have uh, as we isolated the tooth and uh, we are seeing a uh, pus coming from, from the, from the uh, uh, root canal and we also uh, see some blood. There was no problem with the isolation uh, of the tooth. So, uh, so we must wait a little bit and uh, dry the canal that we see uh, what there is. So if we dry the canal, we, we might see now uh, what is the problem? But the good thing about the, uh, doing uh, uh, doing work with the microscope is the is the magnification. So if we magnify a little bit more, we see that there's a fracture that is uh, coming from the cervical margin and is going into the distal. So now we we know the answer. So here we recommend the extraction um, endo would be would be uh, endo is no no part of the deal other things are these small flag fractures what we can uh, see in a lot of teeth and we must always uh, look if the fracture is going inside the inside the root canal and and the other thing is if the fracture is going through the whole hard dental tissue in this case uh, that was not the uh, not the issue, so I decided I will I will continue with the with the, with the endo and um, uh, the canal that is uh, near the fracture. I decided that I will uh, I will take a smaller taper uh, 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 as I prepared the canal. So I didn't took a, a point of a point six a taper, but I I took here a point four. I uh, did it with the. TF, uh, TF and the SM uh, files, so SM1, SM2, SM2 files. And uh, for sure, uh, it will be advisable to go here uh, with the crown after the treatment. So look at this um, uh, maxillary first molar. We see that uh, here is a partial uh, root fill, so it's only in the palatal but uh, we see there is a decay uh, between the six uh, and the seven so first we must remove the old filling as we do it we see this is the 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 case and we see here also a fracture that is uh, coming from the uh, cervical area and then it's going to the distal distal buckle and we see no ferula here so uh, for me, this was a case uh, for extraction, so no endo, and uh, that was extraction, and we can do the implant here. Another case, uh, we have here the second incisor. Um, a crown is uh, on the on the road, and we uh, on the on the tooth, and we need to to make a re-endo here. So we see there is a small metal post uh, in the tooth, so um, we can try to uh, to. Um, to uh, we can try not to cut through the crown but to uh, try to get the crown off um, without cutting and uh, when we do so here is the crown we see the small post and this is what is left and we see there is enough uh, dental uh, dental structure when we see from the from the uh, uh, from the vestibular side, we see that is, uh, there is enough ferula, so we can con continue uh, with the work because we, we know that if there is no ferula and even when we uh, put the fiber uh, glass post inside, it will not hold and it will all fall uh, out. So that's uh, the, when we are coming uh, to the biological width and we will, uh, we will speak uh, about it later. So to the biological width. So what is it? So let me show you this, uh, this uh, second premolar. And uh, this is a case uh, where when uh, you are looking only on the X-ray, uh, you, you are thinking, oh, okay, no problem. I do the pre-endo, I do the re-endo, and I put a, a post inside and I will prepare the, the, the tooth for the crown, okay? 
but uh, look uh, look at this okay uh, in the past there was a fracture that is uh, that and the fracture is going uh, going deep 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 under the gingiva and to the alveolar bone okay so if you want to if you want to make their uh, preendal we must put a circular matrix there and and go beneath the alveolar bone because we know, we know that we we uh, we want to see clear uh, clear the the margin of the of the tooth so that's the problem or if we don't make their uh, uh, preendo uh, okay let's say we will we will uh, we will prepare the tools in the future how how, um, how do you want to make their impression there so that's a big problem so now we are um, in the decision so extraction or we do osteotomy and we will cut a little bit from the alveolar bone to get about two millimeters of space under the margin of the tooth and then we can continue but as, as you as you as you saw there were so many problems okay the pause there is a lesion there is this fracture and so on and so on so i decided decided um you know it is not worth so extraction and then implant or a bridge so let's talk about a little bit of the biological width maybe you heard it maybe maybe not but it's very important so so uh, we know what is a sulcus. So uh, let me uh, let uh, 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 let me say that no normally the sulcus has a depth of one millimeter when we probe it with a probe, and under the sulcus there are like there are, there is a complex of epithelial attachment, what is uh, what is one millimeter, and the connective tissue. And this complex of, of to connective tissue and the epithelial attachment build the biological width. Normally, the biological width is uh, about two millimeters. And what is the problem? If we have, for example, decay in the uh, in the in the sulcus that is coming in the epithelial attachment, then we are going like uh, in this biological width. And uh, our organism wants to have the biological width two millimeters. So, if we are going uh, down uh, under the sulcus. And we are ending, for example, our our restoration in the in the epithelial attachment. Our body will be not happy with it, and uh, the body wants to uh, to make the complex of the of the biological uh, biological width again. So, if you see, there is the crestal bone uh, mark uh, orange, and uh, normally the uh, the crestal bone go a little bit. Uh, it will it will uh, it will be less. And the biological width will be will be two millimeters again. So if we if we going in the biological width, we have a we will we will have a problem. So there can be like an inflammation and stuff like that. So so normally it's two millimeters, and we should if we are too deep measure this distance. If it's not two millimeters, we must do something else. I will I will tell later. So, uh, what are the decision-making parameters when, when, uh, when it comes to biological width? So, first is the technical operative parameter. So, it's the possibility to proper isolate the operating field with the dental dam. And there is the biological parameter. So, we are measuring the distance between cleansed cervical margin. So, we clean it from the decay and we take a periodontal probe. Um, I recommend that uh, you take a probe uh, not uh, where the distances are like the VHO, like 3.5 3 and 5.5, uh, but every millimeter that is uh, there, there is a, uh, there is a mark and we can we can measure it so um, we will make it like from the from the cervical margin to the bone crest and uh, we can also check it with the uh, with the x-ray so and the other thing are the clinical situation as i said before so if we can correct primary isolate the dental done uh, to the sulcus no problem the stage two is that primarily we cannot uh, isolate uh, the field with uh, with the dental dam, but the biological width is well preserved. So well preserved means the biological width is two millimeters. And the st stage three is that that uh, there is a deep subgingival subgingival defect, and the correct primary isolation is not possible, and the biological width is not preserved. So 
this situation else. If we have stage one, no problem, you can continue. If we, if we have, for example, stage two, maybe a uh, um, gingivectomy uh, can solve the problem. But if we have the stage three, uh, don't try it because, um, because uh, you will have problems. So what does it mean when the biological weight it is not preserved? Uh, let me show you this, uh, this uh, case. Uh, first of all, I must say that I done only this case because the patient wanted it. Two times during the treatment, I told the patient that, that this, uh, this tooth must be extracted, but he refused and he told me that he wants to preserve the tooth and I, I, I had to continue. So uh, it's a very problematic patient. You see, for example, that is, uh, there is also a problem on the second, uh, second uh, uh, molar and, for example, the third molar must be extracted, but the patient doesn't want to hear uh, such a news. So look at it, this mess. So you, you see it looks like this. And if you are cleaning it, you see that there's the bifurcation between the palatal and the distal buccal root. So uh, uh, there is a big problem. So normally, OK, uh, no way. You just uh, take the forceps and take the tooth out. But uh, this was not the case. The, the, the patient wanted it. So I done it with, uh, with loose hand. Um, I etch it, etch it all in one and I put some, uh, I put some uh, blue, uh, blue flow uh, down there that I can continue with the endo. And so did was before and after. Okay, I managed to find the MB1, MB2, stuff like that, but it's not important, but you see that it's, uh, there's no reason uh, that I co have continued because uh, there's the problem, um, interproximal problem. So I cannot do their crown, I cannot do their normal uh, filling. So, okay, the tooth is there, but uh, for how long? And what will do the second molar? And normally, uh, if it's possible, we, we are doing it like this. Uh, when we are too deep, you see this, uh, this second premolar and the first molar, and we see that under the crown is a decay and also a decay on the, on the first molar that, when the, that had to be uh, endomate. So a colleague of me done the endo of, uh, of the first molar, and I, I done the endo on the second premolar. And you see that as I, as, as I done the Preendo, uh, preendo. Um, I uh, I'm too close to the to the bone. There there is no way that uh, they are the two millimeters, and I want to do a crown on this on this two. So if I want to do a proper uh, proper impression there, so I I need to I I I need to see the cervical margin of the two. So when I prepare it, so. Uh, osteotomy is the right uh, way to do it. So you cut a little bit bone uh, from the cervical area that you that you see the the margin, and now you can prepare the tooth and uh, do the do the crown. So in this um, in this uh, deep uh, situation, you must consider to to the, do uh, osteotomy there. So let's look a little bit in the periapical area and what we uh, what we can decide about it. So let uh, let's look at this case. So this is uh, this uh, this was sent to me and uh, the task was to do the reendo on the on the uh, on the second incisor maxillary incisor and do the endo on the on the canine on and all through the crowns and you see on the left picture that on the left x-ray that there are multiple uh, pass uh, discharges so there are two uh, and sometimes there are three and four and this is uh, this is uh, this was my mistake because I didn't tell the patient that uh, maybe or there is a quite good chance that he he must go for a periapical surgery there because I cannot fix it this big inflammation uh, only through the through the um, root canals so I managed to uh, to uh, to uh, manage to from two uh, pass discharges to manage it to only one but there was there was also there there was like um, coming coming pass from from the canine 
So the second incisor was okay. I managed to to do uh, to do uh, obturation there, but um, in the in the in the canine there was there was still some moisture coming outside, and this is the calcium hydroxide inside. So there was ongoing uh, pus discharge. So what is the solution? You send it to a dear colleague. And this was my dear colleague, uh, Dr. Holly, and he did the periapical surgery. So uh, he didn't uh, attempt to uh, do the root and resection. So he managed to clean all the place. He checked the root. There was no uh, resorption. And he managed to go around the, around the canine and and manage it so the the patient came in one mouth i checked the canine there was no moisture coming outside and i i, I could uh, complete this task but this was my uh, my, my bad pre uh, because i i had to uh, pay uh, much more time and also money because i uh, the patient refused to pay the amount by the by the surgeon because i didn't tell him um, before the treatment so i um, i say another uh, another time that please um, please check all the possibilities and think about it and if you have such a case uh, there is a good chance that is not able done only by by endo like uh, like uh, from the from the crown you must go also from the from the, from the root end so this was before and this was after and you see that after one month uh, i i i i was able to uh, to done the endo and uh, you see that the inflammation is already gone and the funny thing is that this is the only case where the puff a puff uh, disappeared uh, after some time uh, no i'm just joking the puff uh, was removed by the surgeon uh, you have many cases uh, where you see this uh, big periapical lesion, and if you have something like this, that, uh, for example, you must you must tell the patient that uh, it will last longer. There will be much more uh, treatment um, uh, sessions where you will uh, where you will, for example, uh, put uh, put the calcium hydroxide dressing into the tooth. And you say now, you say that uh, there is a chance that a surgeon uh, must be involved. And uh, here, 1%, you must do also a CBCT. So uh, just uh, to do um, uh, intraoral in these cases is not recommended because you must, uh, you must be sure that this is a lesion of uh, endodontic uh, origin. Another case. Uh, when I see in a small uh, intraola x-ray that there is a big lesion, I normally send the patients uh, for CBCT. And here you can see that um, there is a problem in the antrum. There is a thickening of the mucosa in the antrum. So uh, you can go for the endo, but uh, for example, you must be very careful if you are doing a down pack. Uh, for example, now uh, here I would uh, for example, uh, decide to to work with uh, um, some uh, some calcium um, uh, calcium cements uh, or with mild pressure that you don't um, over over treat the, the canals and in worst cases you can you can uh, you can push some sealer uh, inside the antrum and in these such cases the recall after one year should be also a CBT, cbct that you see the situation um, in the in the sagittal uh, in the sagittal view so let's talk about uh, the time as uh, everybody knows in these days uh, times is money so uh, let's talk about this aspect a little bit so uh, let's look uh, on this first on this first mandibular uh, molar so you see that there are many problems there is a pfm crown there is a metal post then we have their uh, partial root fill and we have also a periapical finding 
And now it's up to you to decide if you are going for the endo of the re-endo or not. But this is a part of the pre-endo. So um, thinking about it, all the possibilities, what can happen. So you must tell the patient, okay, the crown uh, can break after you will dr dr uh, dr drill through the crown and other things can happen. So everything must be well uh, interpreted. So the, the patient can decide and also you, okay, it is a good case to treat. So when we start, we drill through the crowns, we find the post, we, will, uh, we, we remove the post. And uh, this is before, and this is uh, after the re -endo, and this is after six months. And if you've done all the, uh, all the things right, you see after six months that there, uh, the healing will occur. But, th but the thing is that this treatment uh, lasted about three hours, okay? So um, maybe what is your, what is your um, uh, payment for an hour? Multiple, uh, multiple with three, and then you will, you will have the, 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 the cost of the treatment. So the, the question is, it is worth, for example, in your practice to uh, do such a thing or to extract and do an uh, implant. So you know the ISO sign is the International Organization for Standardization, and um, we all knew the the the, uh, the the files in Endo are are uh, are ISO. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you if you if you buy a 10k file from uh, from uh, from one company and from uh, from another, the size will be always the same. And it is a shame, for example, that many many things other things in dentistry are not iso so this is a good thing and everybody for, uh, for from us or everybody who is working uh, should have a iso standard so for me when i when i tell you this kind of uh, some uh, kind of cases and everything of what i tell you i have my my standard and it's it is important that that uh, you have the same standard because otherwise uh, I will have another results, uh, results, and you will you will have another. So first of first of all, isolation. Uh, now in uh, now of these days, a very popular word, but I'm in the isolation with the dental dam. So you can uh, you can do um, you can use dental dam. The optidum, optidum is very uh, very nice future and a lot of uh, clamps. But uh, for me, a very good clamp, for example, for the molar area is the soft clamp because uh, it, it's not hurting the gingiva so much as the metal clamps. And the other things when we are talking about and all, all the stuff is the optical magnification. So all the all the cases um showing uh, by myself are, are done by uh, under the dental operating microscope so if you are not using it um, uh, you you cannot um, achieve such a result um, uh, uh, as with so maybe i can i can push you a little bit uh, with my cv but my cv in optical magnification so let's let's look at it i graduated uh, 2005 and i bought my first loops in 2009 in um, from this point of view it was a little bit uh, it uh, it could be a little bit earlier so i recommend you that you you are using the dental loops um, uh, as fast as you can, so it would be uh, advisable to use it uh, on, on uh, as you study. So that's no problem. Then I bought the light because uh, the dental loops without the light, um, it is only a, a half thing. And then 2011, uh, we decided our, our clinic that uh, we will buy a dental operating microscope and. Uh, the the doctors of you that are using the microscope know that uh, you are not uh, starting it uh, as you buy it because you are a little bit scared is a new unit so i i um, had to think about it about a half in a year and then i decided i will start slow and i i started to to do only the the end under the under the um, operating microscope and as i was a little bit uh, more sophisticated 
I done more, and uh, three years ago, I I decided I will uh, I will try to do all the 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 different aspects of the dentistry under operating microscope. So I do all the endo and all the restorative under the dental opera, uh, operating microscope. I am um, I'm uh, preparing uh, my my cervical margin uh, when I when I do prosthetics. And sometimes when I have to uh, to to get uh, when I broke uh, for example a root, I, I use uh, also microscope. So there are many ways to use a microscope, and I think it's a it's a good decision to use uh, use one. So like uh, let's go to the pre endodontics in the strict sense, uh, as you maybe imagine that uh, this will be all about this. So it's is the is the pre endo build up in the in the first uh, session so uh, this is the normally but uh, in uh, many situations we must do the pre endo build up in the second session because for example a patient is coming with a pulpitis and he's in the pain so we don't have the time to do the uh, pre endo in the first session also here uh, is the problem with the dental gum isolation so the primary and the secondary and also the problem with the, with the biological width, we will we will we will um, look at some cases. And the pre endo buildup uh, can be can be different in uh, in uh, many ways. For example, we can uh, we can uh, have the pre pre endo as a definitely uh, if it definitely build up. So this this means that uh, that your pre endo will be also the the final filling of the tooth so it will be in the full height on the gingival margin so, so no uh, prosthetics will be made on the tooth because we are living in the in the in the world that uh, not everybody can afford um, uh, a crown on uh, endodontic treated tooth or the the um, the hard dental tissue loss on the tooth is so low so we don't have to put a crown um, on it. The other thing is that we can do margin elevation. So we are like elevated the margin from, from the deep uh, area a little bit uh, over, over the gingiva and then we can, we can um, take a full ceramic crown and we can cement it on the, on the comp uh, composite. That's no problem. So margin elevation. Uh, then uh, we can we can have the situation that we we do the pre end on the on the gingival margin only temporary. So we knew, we will we know that after the endo treatment we will prepare the tools for a crown and we will go deep till the gingival margin and on our gingival margin will will be the crown. And as I say this, uh, I mean this all adhesive. So no amalgam, no uh, no. Um, no other, no other products, only uh, composite. So when we see adhesive, we must say what are the adhesive system. And the evolution was was long and um, and uh, very very important. So that uh, we know that in the fourth uh, generation, uh, fourth generation is the Optibond FL. And I must sell, uh, say here now that I'm a Optibond FL lover, lover. So. I, I, I use uh, in my practice Optibon FL most of the time. I will, I will tell you why, and you will see in some ca cases why. Then came the, the other, um, uh, other uh, generation when, where only one bottle was, uh, was, was used and uh, two bottles, but now we have the eighth and the ninth uh, generation. And it is not uh, now only about the bonding of the of the of the, for example, the restoration to the dentin of the enamel. Now this this new generation of the of the bond and, uh, for example, the Optibon Extra, a Universal or the Optibon Extra, uh, the uh, the Optibon Universal that uh, these uh, these uh, bonding system are used also in the prosthetics and for example in some cases you don't need uh, don't need to use the primer and uh, in uh, some cases you don't have to uh, to use the light to cure this uh, this kind of bond so so it's uh, going to 
will be quite interesting that other fields of, of, um, of dentistry are, are also involved. So the question is which composite to use, for example, for the, from the Priendo. But I say that, uh, that you can use also um, enamel composite, a dentin or a, a general composite. But I would like to uh, say here something about the sonic fill because it's a bulk fill composite and it's a really fast way uh, to do your preendo. So I use this quite often when I don't have the time or the tools is too big to, to make there too much increments and you can increment here in one, uh, one uh, session of five millimeters of the, of the products and you, you need, need this uh, special contra-angle, but it's very fast and uh, uh, very precise. So uh, look at this. So you just push it and push, push, push. And I think it lasts about four or five seconds and you have the, the whole wall. So with, with, uh, this, uh, with this material, you can do also the buildups. And, and if you have, for example, many cavities uh, uh, each to each other so you can use this it's very fast and it's very safe so uh, let's go to the first class where uh, the preendo will be the final filling and you have some cases uh, in which you don't even uh, think about it that here will be a crown you, you, you will be happy if you make, uh, make here a proper endo and this is a patient who are who is not coming to the dentist very often uh, she doesn't want to extract the tooth and uh, you you can you can uh, choose or tell her okay i have i have some uh, some good news for uh, for you i can fix it but it will be quite expensive and uh, it will it will uh, take a lot of time. Why? Because you see that the, the the root canals are obturated, and you will need a lot of patient uh, patience and uh, a lot of time to, for example, do also the the restorative part uh, good. So this is the end product. Uh, you see that um, uh, I managed to do the endo and also managed to do the the filling right because we 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 want to have a good, good contact in the proximal area so if you if we take a dental floss and we going through the through the uh, in, in the proximal space we want to hear that the 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 floss is making a pump so it it it's not too good when the when you don't see a resistance from the floss so this is possible so if you if we we will be marked like this, so the problems are if you have a decay near the near the margin, so the gingiva, so you have the paragingival and subgingival defects. Uh, you have a you can isolate primary or no, so you must do for example a gingivectomy. The gingival margin is there. On the gingival margin can be for example enamel or only dentin, uh, so it's a little bit tricky down there. And there's a there's the need uh, in many cases to go with the gingivectomy, and we have the issue with the biological width, as I said, you know. So we must measure it if we if we can afford there to go there without uh, osteotomy. Osteotomy. So look at this case. Normally, when you put the matrix inside and you go with the wedge uh, from from the side. Uh, it will, it will, it will, uh, it will uh, be like this because the wedge will uh, will uh, push uh, the the partial matrix into the tooth, and you can make it like this, no problem. But um, food will will uh, go there, and also you will have uh, inflammation in the in the interoximal area. So normally you should do it like this first. You will do the margin elevation. You go a little bit. Uh, you you will the, in the first step. You will elevate, and then you can pu uh, put the partial matrix there, and then you can wedge. And now you will have a result a result that is that is really nice, also for you and also for the patient. And the problem is that the, this 
Uh, I done this endo and I wanted to see the patient after six months that I, I check it. So I done, done the X-ray and um, I see that there is a problem with the, with the filling and I, I told the, the, the patient uh, this is it or uh, will the, will the filling uh, be, be made uh, afterwards? And he said, no, no, uh, my doctor told me that this is, this, is, this is it. So this is the end product. And we see that um, here is a problem. So there is a contact, okay, but there is a not uh, a good contact because the the, the tooth should be uh, should have the contact in a different place. So this is the right position or the right shape of uh, of the of the restoration. And the problem is that that we are in the near near the the crystal bone and. As the uh, as the doctor put the wedge inside, the wedge went a little bit up, and this this happens. So here in these cases, if we want to go with the restoration, we we must do something a little bit uh, different. So let's uh, let's look at it. So what is the step by step in this uh, sub gingival defects? So first of all, we 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 have to do a gingivectomy. And then we must uh, do the secondary isolation because in this case, is a primary isol isolation is not possible. And then we must do a margin elevation. And uh, this we are doing with the circular, uh, circular matrix. And then we can, we can insert uh, a sectional matrix and it's an uh, option because if we want to go there, for example, with, with, uh, with the overlay, then we can we can uh, we can finish with the margin elevation. But when the when the final filling is in the in the full height, so we will we will continue with the insertion of the sectional matrix. And normally we we are uh, we are happy with these matrices. So the normal one, then we have the super mat system, which is which is really nice. When you when you have, for example, the MODs and stuff like that, it's really in a system where you where you have good contacts. That that is really important. So the shape of the of the matrix is very nice. But uh, sometimes we need uh, something like this, and this is these are the matrix elevation bands, which are going a little bit deeper sub gingivally, and we use it in the frontal and the premolar area and. Uh, you can use it also on molars, but the molars must be a little bit um, smaller. And in and, and in the distal area, in the molars, we are using these banana matrices, uh, which are which are uh, which can go which can go really really deep. And uh, without this, we would be in many cases uh, we would have not uh, another chance just to extract the tooth. So in the molar area, these banana matrices are really nice. So look at this case. This is the uh, this is a young uh, young uh, lady, um, and she has uh, she has a decay on the second uh, mandibular premolar and also uh, on the second uh, second um, molar. Um, I managed to to uh, to not to do endo on the secondary molar, but the premolar was uh, was uh, endo. So. The first thing that when you see uh, such a case is you are uh, you want to preserve the uh, the cervical margin of the of the of the dentin that it doesn't fall out. So I was like very 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 gentle to it and and uh, it preserved there, preserved there so it didn't break. But uh, when the patient came for the for the for the filling, so this was the situation. So the the whole cervical margin broke uh, subgingivally, and now you have this uh, this kind of situation. So you see that the premolar, the half of, of the premolar is preserved, so uh, we don't have to put there a crown. So and, and even the lady is very young. Uh, so so here is the problem that if we wedge it now with the partial matrix, so we have we will have a problem. So. Uh, we sound, uh, sound blasted it and then you are putting a uh, uh, circular matrix around it and now you just elevate the, the margin. And as you elevate the margin, uh, you, must, you must protect the, the, the neighbor teeth, so for example, with the Teflon, uh, Teflon tape that you don't etch it. 
Now you can etch it and uh, you, you can you apply the adhesive, adhesive and now you, you have elevated uh, the cervical margin. So you are, uh, you are now you are supra gingivally and now you don't, you don't have a problem to put a, a, a partial matrix there and, put, uh, and to, put, to wedge it properly. You put the clamps and uh, maybe you see some moisture there and then somebody will say, okay, there's a moisture there. For me, it's not a problem because now we are bonding together uh, composite to composite. So even if there is some moisture, but I can, I can dry it, uh, but even if there is some moisture, you can sound blast it, uh, make uh, adhesive, for example, you just, you just continue with the second bottle so from the, uh, not the primer, but from the adhesive of the Optimum FL, it's like bond, uh, it's like flow, and you just, you just put it, you, you just, uh, you put some light on it and you can, you can uh, continue. So for me, no problem. The, 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 the harder thing is to have no moisture as you elevate, elevate the, the margin. So you, you, you will finish with your resto uh, and uh, this is the, the final result. You polish it uh, and this is a magnification about of uh, 12. So it's really, really big. So pre endo for margin elevation is the another case. You have here the secondary uh, molar and you cannot continue with the endo without, uh, without uh, doing the pre endo. So you are doing the pre endo and here is the loss of the dental tissue, hard dental tissue a little bit more. So we decided here that he, we, will, uh, we will do here uh, overlay. And the good thing when you are elevating the, ma uh, the margin that you can, uh, for example, uh, uh, isolate the tooth, uh, the, the teeth, and then you can prepare the the whole situation under under the dental dam. So I I, I did my my preparation under the under the dental dam, and here is the here is the here is the overlay, and you 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 just bond it uh, to the to the tooth. So uh, there that is not the problem. So here we just elevate and. We have in the distal area still some com com composite, and we we uh, we bonded the full ceramic uh, overlay to the cervical margin of the composite. And uh, the last situation where you know that you will have the pre endo only temporary, so you you know that you will you will. Uh, prepare the tools for, a, for example, for a crown. So look at this situation. We have a uh, first premolar with, with, uh, with the decay under the, under the filling and we won't do a pre-endo. We have uh, some lesion, very epic lesion. So let's, let's uh, look at this case. So this is the situation. I already done my uh, gingivectomy and you see that on the uh, gingival margin there is some uh, enamel left so that is a good situation we have one wall remaining and now we must start to uh, to start to uh, secondary uh, isolate the tools with the dental dam so we are for example uh, putting a dress through the through the through the through the tools you will need uh, for example two or three probes because one probe uh, holds the assistance, one holds uh, you and uh, maybe a third one is uh, necessary. And now you are trying to, to get the, the secondary isolation and then it looks like this. So now it's, it's good, but now you uh, have to uh, put a, a, a ligature there. So you just, you just uh, take your ligature and Put it, uh, put it to the tooth that is it is even tighter in the cervical area. You you clean the decay, and uh, you you go with your you do with your circular matrix, and I I don't care if in the cervical area it is not so good because I know that I will I will prepare this tooth for a crown, so I will etch. I will uh, put my OptiBond FL, the fourth generation, because I will will uh, take the advantage from the second bottle 
that is like a flow composite. So it will it will flow under the under the under the uh, areas they are not so good. And I will mark my uh, my entrances uh, into the pulp chamber because now I'm putting uh, 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 a cement, uh, build it cement inside. Okay, so now now I, I put it inside, and they are they are, uh, normally they are dual cured, but um, I say that uh, to you very 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 uh, it's important that you la leave. Um, I leave this cement to set up. So I will leave it here like five minutes, and af after five minutes, I will I will uh, light it with the lamp. I will harden it, and uh, then I will continue. So this is the the end situation. You can uh, you can see it uh, from the side, and this is what, for example, my first session. So this uh, done it. Uh, this I had done in the first session, and the patient is uh, going home. And next time uh, when he will come, I can I can uh, normally isolate. I will drill through the through the through the cement, through the build up cement. I will find my uh, blue blue flow, and I can start with the with the with the reendo. Then I put uh, my new filling inside. Put some uh, post do the post endo and then i can prepare the this uh, for the crown so this is uh, before and this was after you see that there is a post inside and now we can prepare uh, for a crown okay so let's look uh, to another situation this is a second premolar we see that there is also a crown and uh, we we are trying to to get rid of the crown and then we we, we do reendo so we are we, we see that the crown is super gingivaly what is very good and when we when we put it when we put uh, the crown down then we i have a problem here sorry Okay. Sorry for the interruption, by, uh, but I had a little bit of problem. It, it didn't work. So, so let, let's look at the situation. You 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 cut uh, you cut through the crown and get rid of the crown, and you see the metal poles inside as you. Uh, as you remove the post, you see uh, this kind of situation, but uh, you don't have to time to start with the with the with the endo. Uh, so the first session is that you only do the pre endo. So you you put some Teflon Teflon tape inside, uh, some uh, blue flow, and then you put your um, your build up cement uh, dual cure. And you can. Uh, this is only like a uh, possibility, but in difficult cases where you don't, uh, when you are not sure if you if you find the way in the in the second session to the to the pulp chamber, you can, for example, put some uh, GP point like this, and then when when you drill, you go like through the GP point, and you will find your your way down. And then in the second session, you will. You will finish your uh, endo, and you will uh, put some uh, post inside, and you will, uh, in this case, also use the build-up cement uh, for cementation of the posts. This is before, and uh, this is after. Now it is ready for the for the uh, for the uh, for the preparation for the crown. But uh, let's go. Uh, to the neighbor, uh, to the neighbor, the first uh, mandibular mandibular molar. Okay, so here is another situation that we are we see that the crown is also uh, uh, supragingivaly, so it's a good sign. We see that there are two metal posts. Um, uh, it doesn't make for me. Um, it doesn't make uh, for me. It has no sense to put a, a post in the mesi uh, in the in the 
mesial canals. Uh, for me, a good spot is the distal one, but the angulation must be correct, not like in this case, because here can be even the perforation in the bifurcation. So you must be uh, very, very uh, uh, patient and very, very um, precise when you when you are putting on drilling uh, into the uh, into the uh, into the canal, canals. So here was the situation that there was a really uh, perforation in the distal. You see the MTA which I used for covering the perforation and I want to go with the post under the uh, perforation. So here, um, you know, I don't know which, which kind of uh, filling technique do you, do you prefer, but for me, uh, the number one is the down pack and the back fill because only the down pack um, gives me that I can, I can finish with my, uh, with my, with my filling uh, in the in the deep uh, deep part, and I if I want I can add some uh, some good aperture with the backfill, but if I don't want I will I will finish in in in, in this uh, deep area. So this was before and after, and I didn't I didn't uh, go for a preendo, but as I uh, finish my uh, as I finish my uh, reendo. I um, I took the the dual core build up cement and I built it uh, a pre and uh, 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 a crown you know so that I uh, that I can uh, can I can uh, prepare in the future so I I didn't uh, had to put so much uh, time uh, for the preendo and I did it this in the in the second session so now we, I can prepare the the, the second premolar and uh, the first molar and I did it the technician made me uh, these two crowns and I uh, I cemented. So let's go uh, for the situation if somebody come to you with a pulpitis and you are not able to do the preendo in the first uh, session. So he, uh, the patient has pain and this is the this is the worst case. So you will try you will try to uh, to you will try to uh, to manage uh, this uh, situation like uh, like this. Ah, okay, so here we go. Okay, I'll go here. So, um, in the first session, I um, I just uh, done a trepanation, so I did a, a cleaning of the cervical margin. I put some tef Teflon tape uh, inside because there was some moisture uh, coming, uh, coming to the pulp chamber. Uh, I done my excess cavity, but most of the excess cavity was done uh, by the uh, by the uh, decay, and I remove the 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 pulp and uh, put some uh, uh, calcium hydroxide dressing inside. Uh, but it took some time, and I I must must uh, must end my uh, end my uh, procedure here. So I put some Teflon tape here. And I will uh, take my all-in-one, the Optibon uh, universe, and uh, I, I will, I will, uh, I will uh, etch it. I will, I will, I will bond it, and I will take my, I will take my uh, blue blue flow, and I will cover the pulp chamber. And now I can, for example, take my cavit and some temporary filling uh, and put it put it like this and remove all the uh, remove the dental dump and i'm sure that uh, that no infection is coming uh, to the to the pulp chamber till the patient is coming to the second session and in the second session uh, i will do my preendo so I'll adhesive with the composite and now I must 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 dig through the through the blue uh, blue flow. So I, I I will do it like this. You see, there are some uh, some uh, some uh, some flow is left, 
and I will do my down pick, my my back fill, and even with the back fill, uh, you can you can uh, you can uh, fill this isthmus if you like. So then it looks like this, and you can do your post endo. And in this situation, I I, I edge, I bond, and uh, I, I I put uh, there inside uh, build. Uh, this is build it FR, so it's a dual cured um, uh, build cement. So it's in in the in the color white. So this cement can be white, it can be blue, it can be, for example, gold if you like. And the good thing is, for example, that you can use it with a post or or without. And um, for example, when there is a problem. In the future, you can uh, dig through the cement and you see it's white. So when, if you want to to um, find the pulp chamber, it's a little bit easier when it's in the in the uh, it's when it's a dentine the color, for example. So now you can you can leave it like this for a time. Then you can uh, you can uh, take a burr and uh, burr down a little bit two millimeters, and you can cover it with comp composite or you can you can prepare it for a crown for a bridge. As uh, in this situation, you see that there is um, a decay on the on the mesial side of these tools, but we done it uh, afterwards. So you see here the the root fill, and uh, the patient is okay. Okay, so this is this will be the last case, and uh, here will be more aspects to see. So. Uh, First of all, when you see such of case, you must be, uh, you uh, you must have like a warning. You see that the the mesolingual is very long and is uh, is very curvy. The distal should be okay, and uh, this is uh, this case was sent it me like this. Okay, there was no preendo. There was also a temporary filling. It was a cement, and the doctor. Uh, told me this, that I only should treat the mesiolingual without treating ad, uh, other canals. So uh, that was the only problem of the doctor. And yes, it was really difficult to treat the mesiolingual because the, uh, the problem was, uh, I will tell you uh, later. So first, uh, I cannot uh, continue with the endo even when I sh when I should find a mesolingual uh, when when there is a moisture. So I must do the preendo now. I done my uh, gingivectomy, and um, I manage to to isolate the tooth and to put put a, a matrix inside. As you see. Uh, there is a moisture in the cervical area, and now is the it's the point that you must remember. So first of all, uh, you must you must afterwards when you done your endo and you are sing, uh, sending back the patient, you must be sure, for example, that you you build your build up, for example, in a, in the in the moisture free uh, environment. So there was one hundred percent bonding or there was such a problem like this and uh, you tell the doctor okay i done the preendo but afterwards you, mu you must done your you there must go a crown with the preparation to the gingival uh, margin so that is really important that you that you that you say uh, that that you uh, that um, you gave the information to the to the doctor how he should uh, proceed so as we done the preendo, I covered my my uh, my entrance to the distal uh, with uh, Teflon tape. So you you just remove it, and as you have the time with no moisture, no uh, no saliva coming inside, then you can look uh, also on the other aspects, not only on the mesolingual, and you see that there's a another canal in the distal part so the doctor fa found only the distal lingual but the distal buccal buckle he uh, it was a she she didn't uh, she didn't found so i took my phone i informed her and i said okay there's not only problem with the major lingual but but there's there are four canals uh, that uh, should be treated and she, and she said okay uh, do all the work because i see that it's a little bit uh, too difficult and it was really difficult 
And it was uh, so much difficult that in, uh, the, in the first session I done my pre and I started to look around. In the second session, I, I, I was able to, uh, to uh, feel the distal, so the distal backline, the distal lingual canals. And uh, it was very difficult to, to, to go through the uh, mesiolingual. Maybe you also have the situation that you, you go one to two, three millimeters in the canal and you cannot go further. So there is a problem. So the angulation of the canal uh, is so worse that you have really, really a big problem. So I was like fighting. And now, uh, now you must know that the not only problem of the canals is the angle that we can measure like this, but the other big problem is the, the radius, the radius of the curvature. And this is more, uh, more challenging because uh, as the radius is getting smaller by the same angle of the, of the canal, uh, it's getting difficult because because the the, the curvature, the the radius of the curvature or the 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 the, uh, the root canal uh, uh, the, the the path of the of the root canal goes abrupt. So it's it's uh, there is a crack and you go like like this. So it's not going like like very very smooth, but there is go like this and like this and then you get uh, you, you 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 have trouble to manage it so i was like fighting fighting all the time and the, in this such of situation where you for example go first attempt you are not there not there not there then you you are there okay and now you are happy that you are you you manage to go into the canal full, full length and now what now you go outside and and you need another four to six or ten attempts to go uh, inside. So, for this situation, uh, handpiece, uh, this this M4 handpiece is very very useful because as you go inside and you manage it, like after 20 attempts, you can click a hand file on 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 this on this um, handpiece, and you can start to brush the canal, but not with the hands, but with this uh, handpiece. I will I will explain. So it's for the the M4 handpiece is for hand files, and it makes a movement 30 degrees clockwise and 30 degrees counterclockwise, and you can use it with your uh, emotion and you can uh, use it also without. But you must set uh, the RPMs on 900 and with no torque. The good things when you have uh, the, the, the motor, uh, the, uh, the emotion, then there is a program, you just, you just press it and you can uh, work with it. So you have your hand file, you just, you just plug it uh, into the hand piece and you can start, you can start to, uh, to work. And it's very safe, very, very safe. I use it also when we when we have uh, big or, or big uh, curvatures and uh, in this situation um, it's it's very helpful and uh, i i recommend uh, it to everybody so here is uh, before and here is after and i must say it was a really really uh, difficult case and if you say, if you if you take another look uh, into the approximate area into the gingival area you see that we are really really close um, uh, to the to the to the bone so uh, we have been in the in the biological width so in the in the complex of the biological width so at the end thank you very much for your attention uh, uh, I would like to say everybody who attended uh, this webinar, I would like to say the whole uh, Cabo Care crew, Darius, Monica, thank you very much. And uh, in one week we will have a webinar uh, about CBCT, so I would like to, to invite you there. So one more time, thank you very much and Darius, uh, please.
Okay, Romania, I don't see any questions. So thanks a lot for thanks a lot okay. for uh, this webinar. Uh, to thanks thanks a lot to all attendees. Uh, I hope uh, we'll hear you soon. So I am finishing this session. Thanks a lot. Enjoy your evening.